In the beginning of the year, like when we study about biochemistry, we learn about the four most important macromolecules of life. And these are large molecules that control and make you who you are. We talked about carbohydrates, which are mostly for energy, and some animals, they use it for structure as well. We talked about lipids, which have several functions, including insulation, communication, uh, protection, and water loss uh, inhib inhibition. Um, also, there are major components of the cell membrane and a lot of other things like that. We also talked about proteins, which are very versatile molecules that make a lot of the different things in your body and arguably are one of the most important things in your body. They're the major components of your body and they do things like enzymatic activity, structure, organization, communication, storage, movement, all right, regulation. There's a lot of them. the most important roles in biology are fulfilled by proteins. In fact, in the analogy of life, proteins are like the building blocks, the people, the workers, everything about us a building. And so if life forms are like factories, the proteins are more than the factory itself. It's actually the workers, the machines, and everything else that happens in the factory. So if you think about a protein, it's definitely the one of the most important purposes of life. But then you have DNA. And you could argue that that's more, even more important than the proteins. Now, of course, that makes no sense to have just a blueprint and not have the factory itself. But how would you have the factory if you didn't have the, the blueprints to make, it, to make it or to create it or the plans on how to make the factory all work together? And so DNA is instructions on how to build and how to make the factory actually work. And so arguably it's even more important than having the factory itself because you wouldn't have it if it wasn't for DNA. And so nucleic acids and proteins are two of the most important molecules of life. And early on in the 20th century and late 19th century, scientists were arguing about what was the most important molecule of life and what was the molecule that actually carried genetic information that Mendel talked about as the genetic factor. Now, in the previous chapter, we discussed that the chromosomes were identified as early as the beginning of the 20th century as the most important molecules of inheritance or where the genes that Mendel referred to were at. But the thing is that chromosomes are made of a combination of proteins and DNA, and so scientists were not exactly sure as to what exactly was the factor. Was it proteins? Was it DNA? Was it both? Which was more important? Is it the proteins from your parents that you inherit, or is it the DNA from your parents that you inherit, or do you need both? What is the molecule of life? What is the importance of DNA? Now, of course, we know that DNA is the blueprint of life, is the source of genes, and is definitely the most important part of the building block of life and you wouldn't have the proteins if it wasn't for the DNA and that's why the DNA is definitely definitely one of the most important molecules of life now it is the chicken or the egg kind of thing and we're gonna learn about that on this topic about how DNA depends on proteins and proteins then depends on the DNA so it's kinda of like who comes first who's much more important however the certainly you cannot argue about the importance of DNA in fact modern biology involves almost 100% of the time DNA. Any kind of research that's being done today is most often than not, if it's a biology research, it's going to have DNA in the middle of it. Molecular biology or the study of the structure of DNA, the function of DNA, the protein synthesis, transcription, uh, gene expression, control, biotechnology, changing the DNA, cloning, copying DNA, transcribing DNA, analyzing DNA sequences, comparing animals at different DNAs, seeing what's similar, seeing what's different between different people and different kinds of species. All of this is at the fore end of biology right now. Uh, changing the genes, studying the genes, understanding the genes, comparing genes, uh, knowing of the structure of the genes, all of this is what most of the focus of current biology research is at. So if anyone wants to go in a career in biology or anything that's biology related, DNA is absolutely the future. We're changing the way we eat, we're changing the way we grow food, we we're changing the way medicine is delivered, we're changing the way uh, diseases are understood, we're changing the way we understand what a species is, what evolution is, how it happens. DNA is at the core of all of that. DNA is the particle that makes us who we are, is the particle that makes us react to the environment the way we do, is the particle that makes us a species. This is a particle that changes to make us evolve. It is the center of biology. And it's definitely at the core of what you have to learn about. So in this video lecture series, we introduce the concept of molecular biology with the first topic, which is nucleic acids. Well, we will discuss the history of the discovery of the DNA structure in a molecule. We will talk about a little bit about central dogma. We'll talk about the structure of DNA and RNA and compare their similarities and differences. 
We'll talk about why the DNA is shaped the way it is, chromosomal structure, and finally, how DNA replicates during the S phase of mitosis or meiosis, or in other words, the cell cycle. And DNA structure replication is what this particular first lecture series is all about. I hope you enjoy it and you learn a lot. I'll see you in the videos.